All right, what's going on guys? So coming to you today with part two on the SDR trunk Raspberry Pi build. Um, in the previous video, if you hadn't already watched it, I'll link it for you up here uh, in the cards. We actually built the four inch screen and I'm gonna tell you up front, a lot of the tutorial I'm fixing to go through with you on the PC is gonna be based on some of the drivers that are required for that. Um, given that, we're gonna go ahead and dive in and get right into programming. All right guys, so here we are into the Raspberry Pi imager. We're gonna create our operating system and we're gonna go in and select Raspberry Pi 4. We're gonna go over and choose our operating system, which in this case is gonna be the 64-bit. That's what we need to run the SDR trunk program. We're gonna choose our storage device. For me, it's just 128 gig SD card. Um, you could put it on an external hard drive, a USB drive, whatever you have on hand that'll work with your Raspberry Pi. Now we're gonna hit next. Um, it's gonna ask us that we want to do our OS customization settings. I recommend you go ahead and do this. This sets up your Raspberry Pi, gives it a name, gives it a password. Go ahead and set your LAN system up as far as your Wi-Fi, uh, set your country and time zone, and that's just gonna make it easier to get into after the fact. Um, once we get in here, it's gonna tell us that all the data is gonna be erased on our SD card. We're gonna say yes, and it's gonna to prepare to write all the data onto the SD card. So what it's doing is writing the operating system, verifying it. And then I don't know if you'll get these pop-ups or not. Um, I just cancel out of them, hit okay, cancel. Our image is now done and we wanna put it, take the SD card out of the PC and put it into our Raspberry Pi and start it up. Now, when I put my SD card in and power my Raspberry Pi up, it automatically connects to my Wi-Fi. And then I, in turn, go onto my router and grab the IP address for it so I can punch it into VNC and make a connection. Now you can see here we're connected into the Raspberry Pi. Um, as soon as it comes up, if it's been up for a little bit, you may have this update tab. If you do, go ahead and do the install updates. If you don't have it, it's not a big deal because we're going to do a pseudo apt update as soon as we get into the terminal. Um, during the process of doing this, it may ask you for your password. Um, if it does, type the password in. I recommend doing it correctly, otherwise it'll give you an <laughs> unsuccessful attempt. And then from there, it's gonna do its own thing. It's gonna download all the packages, install all the updates. I'm fast forwarding through most of this stuff so you don't have to sit and be bored with it. You can just pause the video and keep going. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop open the terminal. And this is where I said, if you don't have that update up there at the top, you're gonna put sudo apt, I can't talk, sudo apt update and let it run its update. It's gonna go through and check all packages are up to date, so we're good to go there. Now we're gonna do SUDO APT upgrade. Run that, everything's gonna run through. Nothing was installed because we had already done all our updates, but if there was something to update, it would do it there. Um, now, specific for my build, I have to load in the drivers for my four inch touchscreen. We're gonna do that here. Uh, if you don't have the screen and you're not doing that, then you can probably jump ahead in the video to the next section. I'm just going to run through and punch all these in. All right, it's doing a quick reboot from where I put that in. Uh, it's gonna tell us that the configuration changed. That's fine, we're gonna hit okay. We're still the same IP address because we're still on the same network. We're just gonna continue in and go ahead and get back into the system here. Um, once we're in, the first thing we're gonna do is just verify that everything's operational, jump over to the internet, go up to our search bar and type in SDR trunk. 
Now, once this pulls up, more than likely the first thing that you're gonna get is the GitHub. That's where you wanna be. And if you look down below it, there's a releases tab. Go ahead and select it. Once we get into the releases, we're gonna to start to scroll down and there's a nightly pre-release. We're not gonna do that. Uh, version six, final, this may change as the software updates. We're not gonna do anything there. We're gonna keep scrolling all the way down until we get to the point where the downloads are. Now, once you're down here, you're gonna look for this SDR trunk Lunix AARCH64. We want to run that 64-bit version, so we're going to select it, and it's going to download into our Raspberry Pi. Once it's finished, it'll give us a pop-up there. We're going to close that, and then we're going to open our terminal. And because we downloaded something, I always just go back and do a sudo apt update, and then run a sudo apt upgrade. Um, once I do both of those after I've downloaded something in case there was an additional driver or something that came along, I haven't installed anything, but it's just force a habit for me. I got burned on this a couple of times when I was first trying to program this and uh, got locked out and had to start over. So I'm just telling you that from experience, I recommend to just go back in and do that. Now, once we've completed that aspect of it, we're gonna open up our file folders And once it's open, we're gonna jump over to downloads, open up our download folder. And in that download folder, we should have our SDR trunk zip file. Now we're gonna right click that zip file and just go ahead and extract here. Once it's done extracting, all I'm gonna do is basically open up the file and verify that everything opened. We're looking for the bin file once it's open, we're gonna look over here, this third icon over that says SDR trunk with the gear, that is our launch icon, but that's all we're gonna do at this point. We're gonna jump over to the Raspberry Preferences and go to Main Menu Editor. Once we're in the Main Menu Editor, we're gonna verify the applications is selected, jump over to New Item, select New Item. We're gonna go in and hit Browse. Once we go into Browse, we'll jump to the Downloads folder, the Extracted File folder, go to the bin, come down and select that gear icon SDR trunk file. That's the file that launches the program for you. Now, once it's selected, just go ahead and hit OK. It's going to come back to this screen. Name it. You can name it Scanner or whatever you want to name it. I named mine SDR trunk. Hit OK. Now I'm going to scroll down in the item list and verify my SDR trunks there and that there's a check mark beside it. Hit OK. Come back up to my Raspberry icon. And there it is, SDR trunk. Now all I have to do is one touch click this. As soon as it opens up, we're going to get to Calibrate CPU. I highly recommend that you go ahead and do this now. The reason I'm recommending it is because it's going to take you into the user preferences menu where we need to make some changes and do some additional stuff in order to get SDR trunk running. Now it's going to do this calibrating and once it's finished, it's going to close out, come right back to this screen, user preferences. You're going to click the JMB audio library and you need to create the library. If you don't do this, you're not going to decode your P25. Go ahead and click yes to download the latest source code. Then it's gonna pop up and give you create library. A warning's gonna come up that tells you it's for educational purposes only. Go ahead and click yes. And it's gonna create that JMB library. Once it's done, hit okay. It takes you right back to the user preferences. We're gonna select application. And this is your channel auto start timeout. Once you have your channels and your aliases set up, you can set this to auto start as soon as you launch SDR trunk. Um, I'll set mine to zero. You can set it for a delay so you can select different channels if you want to. That's entirely your preference. Under duplicate calls, I leave the check boxes just like they are. Don't change anything. 
drop down to MP3. I don't do any recording. Um, if you get into that, that may be something you want to research. Uh, output and tones, change that from stereo to mono. Otherwise, you're going to get two different broadcasts in two different speakers that will overrun each other. And it'll be hard to understand. Under record, it's set to MP3 format. We've already done our vector calibration, our JMB audio library. And then we get down to display for channel events, talk group ID. There's really not much anything to change in there. Um, we're going to leave it as file storage as well. Try to expand that out a little bit, but the main thing we're going to hit is tuners. Change the channelizer type from polyphase to heterodyne. Hit OK. Change dual tuner to single tuner and hit OK. The reason we do that is because it's less processor intensive and it runs smoother on the Raspberry Pi. Now we're back over here into SDR trunk. Before we close this and restart it, I want you to go to your tuners tab. Once you're in there, see if you have an error. Now my tuner's already plugged in. I've got an RTL 2832 version three. And I know at this point, I've got to load drivers for that to operate. So that's where we're gonna go in, we're gonna do a shutdown, reboot, and basically let all of our configuration changes take place in SDR trunk open back up into a terminal and we're going to start the whole process of installing the drivers and just like before i've opened up a terminal i've made changes i'm doing the pseudo apt update and i'm going to do the pseudo apt upgrade from there we get into a list of drivers that have to be typed in in order for the rtl dongle to be recognized in sdr trunk um, i will put the driver list um, as far as the command lines for the screen as well as the RTL drivers into the description down there where you can basically copy and paste or copy print whatever you want to do. Um, I don't type the fastest but we're going to type all this stuff in. If you want to do it as we go along you're welcome to do that but we're going to go through each individual line item, type those in and enter them and that's gonna get our SDR dongle up and operational. All right, right here, I missed the T on sudo app get, so I'm having to retype that command. Um, that was an error on my part. You shouldn't get that if you type it incorrectly. Yes, to continue there. Hit yes again. We're getting down to the home stretch here. Um, 
I typed that incorrectly. I put FTL instead of RTL, so we'll make that correction. Enter it. Last couple of lines. All right. And that's it. So now we've got all that in. We're going to relaunch SDR trunk now. Here we are. We're opened up. The waterfall is running. Now, for Raspberry Pi, disable the Spectrum waterfall. It just eases up on the CPU processor. Click on your tuners, and there we go. We're enabled RTL 2832. So, guys, there it is. That has got. SDR trunk installed and you can click the now playing tab there's obviously nothing in there uh, primarily because we have not created a playlist this is where you're gonna have to go to radio reference or one of the other sites I mean radio reference is usually my go-to that's where I can get my control channels and get my playlists and then we can start inputting that information into here as far as channels and aliases go. Uh, this is a whole nother process as far as the setup. What I wanted to do is show you that you could get this program operational on a Raspberry Pi 4. And so there it is. That's the entire process in order to set up SDR trunk and get it operational on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, some people said it couldn't be done. We just proved it can. Uh, I am running right now APCO P25 Phase 1 Digital and translating just fine. I'll throw some audio Probably in here just from uh, broadcast. We can remain in service. But guys, listen, if y'all like this video, definitely give us a thumbs up. Drop comments or questions down below. I am by all means no expert on Raspberry Pi. These are the settings that I use that actually works for me. I'll help you as much as I can, but I can't promise a lot.